welterweight champion of the world in a tornado de Tijuana, the Tijuana Tornado, Antonio Golpes here, punches here, fine. Shake hands, good luck to both of you. Buena los Just minutes ago, the commissioner of boxing, Dean Lohaus, reported to us that an illegal pad was found in Margarito's gloves, something that would harden when, with, when wet and that his hands had to be rewrapped three times. Well, what you meant was really, it was, it was a illegal pen in the hand wraps, not in the gloves themselves, in the way that his hands was wrapped. Oh. Yes, and it has been reported by some who saw it that that substance, which was illegal within the hand wrap of Margarito, was, was wet and was hardening which takes you back to July 4, 1919 in Toledo, Ohio, between Jack Dempsey and Jess Willard, and the ongoing controversy nearly 100 years later of plaster of Paris and the question of whether Dempsey had loaded gloves. It is not a small subject, but we know now that if there was skullduggery going on, it was caught, and Margarito's hands are legally wrapped as he enters the ring against Mosley. Well, that's the only thing that I can set a serious in terms of illegal hand wrapping is having plaster Paris. Well, meanwhile, we got a fight going on in there, and the one who's landing loaded gloves so far in the first round is Shane Mosley, who seems to be trying to take a little bit of a chance in round one and try to make a physical impression on Antonio Margarita. I think he's doing the right thing. He's trying to gain some restraint and to show his physical strength. You know, the one thing about Shane, he's never been considered a big guy, but he's always been a physically strong little guy, very compact, and at one time was a weightlifter when he was in high school. He may also be trying to take advantage of the fact that Margarito's a notoriously slow starter, who, for instance, in his loss to Paul Williams, virtually gave away the first six rounds. Hands are free, man libre. He most lost man. most of the first six rounds against Cotto last yeah. summer, too. Excuse me, Larry. One of the most important punches that Mosley has thrown have been two body shots, because Cotto oh, never right. went to the Raise body the enough to try to Stop. weaken Margarito, who just cannot be weakened with shots to the head. Yeah, some would say, should you hit a freight train in the body? Well, why not? <laughs> One thing is that both of these guys are known for being strong finishers. Even though we talk about how Margarita finishes up strong on his opponents, Shane has also finished strong in most of his key fights. Both victories over Oscar De La Hoya. He won it by winning the late rounds. And even in losing to Cotto, he finished up winning the last part of those two rounds. So it should be Good left hook by Mosley in that exchange. Landed flush. He has four knockouts in the 10th, 11th, and 12th rounds. No, 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 there have been moments when he seemed to be trying for one here in the first round against Antonio Margarito. Margarito has spent this round more or less treading water and trying to give as good as he's gotten in mid-ring exchanges with Mosley. But the aggressor has been Shane, and he's been quicker with his punches, particularly to the body. Now, Margarito begins to land that long left jab. And Mosley instantly shows you his fighter's instinct as he tries to counter over it. Good right hand by Mosley. And as he promised, throwing more jabs than he usually does. Well, Antonio Margarito's no stranger to losing the first round. And it appears that he may have lost another round one. There's nothing there, nothing there. Come on, relax a little bit more now. Relax a little bit more, just relax. Use your jab. Use your jab, and when he ties you up, you all push him to the side. Push him to the side and work your left hand on the inside. Left hand. He's getting in close. He's getting in real close. Right here. He's getting in very close now. There's nothing there. Here you see Shane Mosley doing something he said that he would do that Cotto didn't do was to try to explore body punching with Margarita because no one ever goes to Margarita's body. 
And here near the end of the round, you actually see Shane Mosley land a beautiful left hook on the head. That was the best head punch of the round. I agree with Larry that the body punches were more significant because they introduced a wrinkle that perhaps Cotto penalized himself by ignoring. Copy box numbers in round one. Margarito 12 out of 64. Shane Mosley 15 out of 58. By and large, if Antonio Margarito only throws 64 punches in a round, he had a slow round. His idea is to get up above 100 at some point. When you move away constantly from a fighter like Margarita, you just provide momentum for him to come at you. And that's why Mosley is doing this and staying off the ropes. We only showed you five celebrities in our free fight package, but there may be 500 names and faces in this crowd that most Americans would know and recognize. It's quite a star-studded assemblage here in Staples Center as Mosley bulls Margarito to the ropes and again tries to gain some purchase to the body. blocked that right hand by Mosley. But one thing that Margarita cannot afford to do is get really too far behind. If he gets behind after five or six rounds, you know, he may have a real problem himself because Mosley finishes up strong himself. And yep. then he may have a real problem. Mosley does not wilt going down the stretch. And Margarito ate a one-two combination from Mosley just before Emmanuel was making that comment. So Shane Mosley is still more than holding his own against Antonio Margarito in the early going. And that's why this quiet this crowd is quiet and rested. Well, they're watching jab, jab, jab for Mosley. That punch grazed Mosley. But they're watching two irresistible forces and two immovable objects. And if you watch the way Margarita's moving forward, he almost gets like a little jig sometimes. He even loses his balance. He's becoming a little bit more aggressive with his feet they're putting a lot of pressure and forcing Shane to throw more punches and that fight at a faster pace than he probably would like. Total punches thrown in this round show you that the fight is being fought at Shane Mosley's pace. Margarito not yet able to force Mosley up to a 70 or 80 punch per round pace where the advantage might begin to fall into his favor. Raul Caiz telling Mosley not to use his head I don't want you to be gentlemen. Monday, Real Sports takes a hard look at why so many professional athletes seem to be carrying guns today. Is it poor protection? What caused this trend? At February 23, the premiere of a documentary pretty close to my Carolina heart, Battle for Tobacco Road, Duke versus Carolina. HBO chronicles the fiercest rivalry in college basketball between two schools separated by eight miles. The difference between Durham and the southern part of heaven. Punches in the second round, Margarito, 10 out of 59. That's a very poor round, numerically, for Antonio Margarito. Shane Mosley, 13 out of 53, has the comfort right now of fighting at the pace he prefers. Round three begins. You see that Harold Letterman has given the first two rounds to Shane Mosley. Partially reflective, we think, of the pace of the fight, which so far favors Shane. Shane's faster hand speed has been a big difference right there, because Margarita is not really a super fast fighter, but he, in, in every area he's good. Not su superior at any of them, but just good. Even at his best, Margarito is not as crisp and as sharp and distinctive a puncher as Mosley. 
No. The slower the pace, the more that shows up. Yeah, but the, the biggest thing is that Margarita's got his, 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 his pressure, the tempo he fights at, and he, and he knows that's his strength. He basically yeah. does everything good, not accepted, but the pressure that he puts on a fighter. Well, he believes that to take a backward step is treason. Trademark uppercut turns to talk to Caiz about another headbutt. Keeps pawing with his gloves against his forehead as if to show Caiz that he thinks he's getting butted. And then goes back to throwing his long jab and Mosley counters over it with a perfect right hand. Hard right hand by Mosley. Killer right hand to the body by Mosley. And the early returns would seem to indicate Mosley and Nassim Richardson is a team that should have happened a while ago. Well, if Mosley could continue to do this, because Margarita gets hit early, as we saw with Cotto and, and a lot of the other guys he fought. But, but still, this game, you'd be able to do that for him around the eighth and ninth round because he takes a good punch. And most likely we'll be there for the eighth and ninth round. You're waiting too long. You're waiting too much. Come on, you've got to attack. When you're tying up, no, don't tie. You be first. You be on top of him. Jab, jab, right hand. When he attacks and you block, then go in. Go in and throw. And all of a sudden, he looks up. He looks up ready for a battle. Get him on the inside. Straight, straight from the chin in. You're going to catch him. You're going to catch him with that right hand. How do you feel? Good. Here we see Shay Lynn, a beautiful picture perfect, direct straight right hand over the shoulder. But the thing to notice is, immediately after all of that, Margarita's still moving forward. Once again, here you see Shay Lynn, another right hand. But immediately after that, you see Margarita coming right back again. Let's keep it like that, Let's keep it like that. Alpha box numbers in round three. Again, Margarita 16 out of 65, 22 out of 65 for Mosley. They're starting to speed up. It still favors Shane. Harold, how do you have it through three? Up to Jim. Three rounds to nothing. 30 to 27. Shane Mosley. Jim, in round one, I thought Mosley ruined it with, you know, really got to him with that overhand right. I mean, he just landed it over and over and over again. Round two, Shane Mosley went to the left jab and out jabbed them. Beautiful left jabs in round two. Round three, back to the sneaky right hand, doing much more damage. The problem is, nothing stops Margarito. He just keeps coming when he's getting hit by Mosley's best shots. Three to nothing, Mosley. But Mosley's building a lead on the scorecards. And in his entire career, a professional since 1992, Shane Mosley has been knocked down once. That by Vernon Forrest in their first fight, and never knocked out. No, that's what I was saying. Margarita cannot afford to get too far behind because Mosley may not wilt as fast as the other fighters he has fought in the past. In particular, if he gets five or six rounds, he, all he has to do is win one round somewhere, and he will win the fight. That's how Paul Williams beat Margarita. Won the yes. first six rounds, won the 12th. Margarito's comeback was for naught. He thought he had won, but the judges had it for Williams. As soon as his back hit the ropes, he saw Mosley bounce back into the middle of the ring, not wanting to give Margarito a chance to build up any momentum. That's what Cotto didn't do last summer. Yeah. And Margarito, he, he eats those punches like M&Ms. 
<laughs> just <laughs> doesn't bother him. Well, there were many at ringside last July 26 who walked around in awe and wonder after the fight, saying, that's the greatest chin I've ever seen in reference to Margarito's ability to take a punch. Well, and Mosley is happy to give him a chance to prove it again. Which so far has been the case. Good left hook by Margarito. Mark Mosley holding him here and there trying to slow the action. Yeah, yeah Margarito hasn't been able to land any real clean, crisp punches. He's been just physically getting closer and closer and mauling him. But the clean, effective punches, the head slapping punches are all coming from Shane Mosley. Hey, but that was the case in Las Vegas last July, too. Huge right hand by Mosley. One of the best shots of the fight. With what the after Mosley finishes up, he ties up Margarita instead of trying to move away the way Cotto did. Which tied Cotto out much. He he's taking a break after he lands his flares of punches and wrestling, which is very smart. Well, and now that the commission has removed an illegal implement from inside Antonio Margarito's hand wrap, then inevitably the question will arise, did he have that in the hand wrap last July? Did it harden like plaster of Paris? Was it a factor in the fight? Now listen, you landed some good shots up top, but we gotta remember how they started. We set them up with their body shot. See, this guy ain't used to getting it back at the body. Take that jab, keep popping him up, stab him in his heart, rip around them sides. We gonna show him how he got slow down. When he hit the pedal, ain't gonna be no gas in the car at the end of this. All right? Your combination, Shane, nobody in this division hands as fast as y'all. Run them combinations, knock the grease off this dude, and then swim without getting wet. Slide to your stick, slide to your angle. We won't get it. Here we see Shane continuing landing the same punch. In fact, it looks like it's the same shots we shot the last round. And you see it landing over and over and over. Right hands right on the chin. Compu box numbers in four. Margarita 16 out of 69. Mosley 18 out of 59. Each landed 11 power shots. So numerically, the round was relatively even. But the pace of the fight remains in Shane Mosley's favor. Antonio Margarito has not gotten above 70 punches in any one round, meaning he is nowhere near fighting his fight yet. And if you listen to the intensity in the voice of Nassim Richardson, he is really getting excited. He realizes that they're on their way to winning the championship. And I think that Shane is going to be a rough guy to beat now going down the stretch. Swim without getting wet. That was wet. the one that caught my ear, too. <laughs> what does that mean, Emmanuel? Swim without getting wet. I have no idea. I think he just means punch, but don't stay in there to get punched back. Colorful image. Well, he's doing the right thing. He lands his punches as he grabs and ties up Margarita because Margarita is always going to keep coming forward. So you can't land a punch and just try to dance away because he'll, he'll pressure you. I have never seen Antonio Margarito reduced to trying to land pity pat punches just to make contact, struggling so manfully to try to speed up the pace in a fight, but yet being tricked out of it by brilliant strategy on the part of Shane Mosley, who is changing from round to round, making little adjustments here and there, and still controlling the fight. And meanwhile, the crowd is not in the fight, which is another advantage for Shane Mosley. And if you recall in the Cotto fight, even though Cotto was winning the early rounds, Margarito was doing some damage. You're right. It's, that it's not, showed up later. You're right, Larry. He's very, very ineffective in this fight as compared to the fight with Cotto. Well, you know, I believe both of you made the point before the fight. Mosley had the advantage of watching the Cotto fight on tape, and there was much to be learned there. But of course, it's still one thing to know what you can do and to be Shane Mosley and be able to do it. Margarito after that left hook. 
Good buggy whip right hand body shot by Shane Mosley. And as we reach the end of round five, the mask begins to look very forbidding for Antonio Margarito. I agree, Jim. Margarito's on the verge of losing the championship now. I don't think he can come back as, as devastating as he did with Cotto. He has lost, in my view at least, the first five rounds of the fight. There's Shane's father, Jack Mosley. Shane says he and Jack are getting along great, just as well as ever. Jack was somewhat embittered by his removal of Shane's trainer the first time around, but hasn't expressed any of that this time. He's a man who loves the limelight. Let's keep him off the back of the head, please, oh. Let them fast hands win the round for you, Shane. Hey, don't Careful with the head. Careful with the head. Careful with head. You don't get cut. You gotta work. Work with the left. Inside. Left on the inside, left up top, right over the top, then left. Because he's he's going over to the left. He's leaning over to the left. He's open for that. Copy box numbers in round five. Margarito 18 out of 69. Shane Mosley 16 out of 57. 12 of Mosley's 16 punches were power shots and more to the point. Shane Mosley producing by far the more exemplary impact, the more stunning blows, the more eye-catching offense. And you saw that Harold Letterman's card has Mosley winning every round. Mosley's hit Margarita almost at will with right hands. I mean, he's, he's landed in probably about 80%, which is very unusual for a top-notch fighter, especially a world champion type fighter, to be getting hit with that many right hands. He seems has no defense except to just hit it and try to just get hit and try to just punch after he gets hit. Margarito is a fighter who tries to break his opponent's will, but you've got to be able to hit them with some serious stuff to do that. And he hasn't been able to do that seriously. Oh, stop! Break! Nice and relax. Nice and relax. The look on Antonio Margarito's face is nothing like the way he looked at this moment while trailing Miguel Cotto no. in Las Vegas last July. Yeah, I'm saying the look on his corner's face also. There's no arrogance here tonight. No, they realize they're in trouble right here because Shane Mosey doesn't fall apart going down the stretch and, he's, and, and Shane is still landing crisp, clean punches. And Margarito is starting to retreat, which is news. He's getting beaten to the punch in every exchange. Once he get, may be retreating just looking yeah. for a new answer. Yeah, once you get behind as, as serious as Margarito's behind now, and you're not a devastating one-punch puncher, which he isn't, and he's got a fighter now who doesn't fall apart, means he's going to be in trouble. And he's not wearing the other guy down because he's much more on the defensive than on the offensive. I mean, what a fight. Tremendous right hand. And when I say what a fight, what a fight by Mosley. And a second straight flush right hand. And a third straight right hand. Which pretty much eliminates any chance that Margarito could have won this round. And the whitewash seems to be continuing in Staples Center. Antonio Margarito, a four to one betting favorite, is nowhere in the fight so far against Shane Mosley. And we are halfway done. And his arms Break. appear nice weary. Box. Stop at the bell. That is a look up defeat. Go man, too square, too square. Move to your right, move to your right. So you can catch him with the right hand. You're, you're letting him lead. He's winning the round, son. What's wrong, son? You're tired? No, 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 not at all. So what? Control the fight mentally. You've got to attack. You've got to attack. You have to punch. You have to press him. If he comes on close on the inside, no man will be there. 
Activate yourself. Okay, let's go. Knock that grease Not only has Shane Mosley been hitting Margarita at ease with long distance pitcher punch right hands, now he's hitting it with even short close right hands inside. It seems like he cannot miss a right hand punch. The sixth Let's round go. was by far the best for Shane Mosley. 26 out of 66, 14 of the 26 power shots. Margarito 13 out of 54, meaning he's slowing down and backing out of the fight. And Harold, you got him a shutout, right? <laughs> Absolutely, Jim. Six to nothing. 60 to 54, Shane Mosley. Jim, the only thing in that ring that Shane Mosley hasn't hit him with is the stool and a referee. He's hit him with everything else. What he does is he gets inside of Margarito's long arms. I mean, he doesn't give the guy room to punch. As long as he stay, they, they call time out to put the wrap up the tape. As long as he stays inside, Jim, Margarito doesn't have room to use that long left hook. Six to nothing, Mosley. Come in, come on. Just a brilliant job of footwork, ring generalship, sharp punching, excellent choices. I don't think Shane Mosley's made a mistake. Oh my gosh. And you know something else I've always said that Shane didn't have that he's impressed with. He actually has a good jab tonight, too. Usually he just, you know, jingles his left hand out plays a range runner, but he's actually throwing effective jabs in addition to the right hands. I he's don't think I've ever seen him look so technically good. Maybe against Luis Colasso a couple of years ago. I think this is his best fight. I mean, I'm really, I mean, well, he's, he's in, punching in a, to this fight. In a sense, in a sense, this is like Hopkins against Pavlik because he knows exactly where his opponent is going to be at all times coming straight to him. Hopkins looked 10 years younger against that kind of an opponent than he did against faster, hungrier guys like Taylor and Calzaghe. So how many fighters are going to want to hire Philadelphia's Nassim Richardson after this? <laughs> I mean, first Richardson guides Hopkins to the annihilation of Pavlik. And then this, which would be one of the biggest upsets in the sport in recent years, it mostly continues to pull it off. Hands are free. Just pull your hand out, Shane. And your both hands will be free. And we qualify if it continues, because of course, you'll recall that Miguel Cotto was in pretty good shape on the scorecards at this point against Margarito last summer in Las Vegas, but that was an entirely different kind of fight. Entirely it's a different fight. I mean, you could see the momentum was going with Margarita, but this fight here, the momentum at this point is getting stronger. If anyone would get stopped, it may be Margarita just from just a dollar to ride their punches. Well, if he hit keeps him. getting hit with flush right hands, the way Mosley is hitting. Even though Mosley's not a big punch. Now here's a little but... rally by Margarita. He shows a, just a little burst of energy there. Taking punches, but that's always the case. Trying to get back into the fight by landing something hard. But Shane Mosley is a fighter himself. He's, he's not going to let you ever take completely control of him. No, and he rolled his chin very well against Margarito's right hand. Ten seconds. Stop at the bell. Nice. He's warning Margarito against low blows. Warning Mosley against butts. The light momentarily went back on in Antonio Margarito's eyes. But I'm not sure that means he won the round. Come on, throw it all, throw it all. You were doing it now. You were doing it and you hurt him. Just be careful. As soon as you hit, beat on the defensive. And then attack him again. Move to the sides. Come on, relax. Wake up. It's a bumper crop of hot young prospects in boxing. Some of them you will see in February on HBO, including that man, James Kirkland, a huge puncher at 154 pounds in an excellent fight against Joel Julio. And that man, Victor Ortiz, one of the hottest young prospects at the sport, in the sport. Uh, and he will also appear in February on HBO. Ortiz was ESPN.com's prospect of the year for 2008. That last round was the best round for Margarito, so I assume he'll get it um, in comparison to his other rounds. So he's going to have to put more of them together. Yeah. That was what we call a comparison round compared to the others, but still probably in match didn't win it, but he probably would get it on the scorecards because it was better than what he did before. 
another flush right hand for Mosley, perfectly set up by a good left jab. As, 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 as he, as he can't miss a right hand. It's almost as if Margarito is trying to break your hands with his jaw. Larry is exactly what I was thinking about. He's hit him so much that it's the biggest danger there. It's really hurting or breaking his right hand. Margarito got in a quick Stop. left hook. Nice and relaxed. Nice and relaxed. But nice we're into the no eighth talking, round no of a schedule 12, no, and not no once has the Tijuana Tornado managed to get above 80 throw, uh, punches thrown in the round. And in past fights, such as the second half of the Cotto fight, it wasn't unusual to see him throw more than 100 punches in the round. Break. Almost all of them hard punches. Just haven't seen it tonight. But the thing Shane can be in, get hit and do it, and then he knows whenever he wants to, all he has to do is to land that fast right hand and put things right back on track again. Because Margarita's head is going to be right there. But Margarito's volume is slowly oh, beginning to crank up. Stop! Break. Nice as I said earlier, Jim, once he lost five rounds and six rounds, I mean, that's it, serious. It's the third round, maybe, but when but he started in this half, it's, it's very hard to run a decision right now. For Mosley. I mean, for Margarito. Margarito. For Margarito. He's too far behind with a guy who doesn't fall apart. And who is that. still effectively controlling the pace of the fight. Yep, and when he wants to throw that right hand, he knows he can throw it, and it's going to be, a hit is going to be there at the end of it. Crowd is trying to urge Margarita back into the fight. They like the right hand he landed there. But once again, Mosley backs him off with sharp combinations. This would make just a good fight. These are two guys who both refuse to let someone take total control. As soon as Shane looks like he's uh, in trouble, He'll start firing back, and Margarita does the same thing. But Shane has better hand speed. I believe that Shane's going to still have to win. Another Margarito one was stunned by the right hand. Margarito has not thrown since Shane landed that combination. Mosley has Margarito in trouble on the ropes. Staggers him with that right hand. He's about one more right hand away from going down. And he doesn't know how to tie up using survive like most fighters do. He's not used to being in this position. Good left hook by Mosley. That was a knockdown. He went into the ropes. And there's the knockdown. And Margarito looks like a beaten man. Awesome. Wobbling on his feet. Let's see if Raul Keys is going to get a fight. The bell ends. Round eight, saving Antonio Margarito from a possible knockout. And he staggers to the corner. He's got corner. no legs. How are you? How are you? Water, where's the water? Come on, son, how are you feeling? Come on. All right, son, where's the water? I'm OK, I'm OK. No, no, no. It's over. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm okay. No, 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 you're not. No, you're not, son. That's it, that's it. Here, no, please. You, here you see the left hand that hurt Margarito. He shot the uppercut and he comes back with a left that hit all of the power because he got, and then after that it was just a matter of falling through. And, and from this that is point another left hook. The chain is lunging forward with full force and weight on all of his punches. There are people in Margarito's corner who are not sure no. they should send him out again. If I was but how could you not send out a warrior like him? Round nine of a scheduled 12. Two point round for Mosley in the last round. Margarito would have no chance to win this fight on a decision. Must have a knockout if he's going to maintain his position in the division. Shane Mosley at age 37 is trying to become the number one welterweight in the world. And that's the way he'd be recognized if he can beat this man in Mar the way that he's beating him right now. Margarita has no defense at all for punches. This fight could be stopped any second now. Margarito is getting hit flush with every right hand. There's another one. There's a big left hook. Why not stop it now? And there's the right towel from the corner. And Shane Mosley has annihilated Antonio Margarita. Can that man fight?
In the ninth round, Shane Mosley landed 21 punches, and Antonio Margarito did not land a single blow. Before the largest crowd ever to enter Staples Center for any kind of event, any kind of event, Antonio Margarito has lost his welterweight supremacy to Shane Mosley. And coming into the ring amid a set of distractions that might have knocked over a building, Mosley knocked over the toughest building in boxing. I am thoroughly, thoroughly impressed, and I would say this, and uh, somewhat very surprised. This performance here is just unbelievable, and this, he did everything. Let's watch the finish. Margarito tries to make every fight a laboratory of pain, but he's the only one in pain here tonight. Well, it was clear that referee Raul Caiz could have stopped it at any moment there. I mean, Margarito wasn't offering back and was basically getting hit flush with every power shot. So finally, Caiz stepped in just as Margarito crumbled to the canvas. This is what makes this sport so unique. You theater of the unexpected. <laughs> you you have Cotto <laughs> getting destroyed by Margarito, and Cotto had beaten Mosley. Mosley comes back and totally destroys Margarita. This is what's so great about boxing. Yeah, you know, Joe Frazier beats Muhammad Ali. George Foreman walks over Joe Frazier. Muhammad Ali beats George Foreman. That's what we love about boxing. Let's go to Michael Buffer for the particulars on the shocking upset. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 43 seconds of round number nine. To the winner, by knockout victory, in one of the greatest performances of his Hall of Fame career, and once again, WBA welterweight champion of the world, Sugar. Shane Mosley. Final CompuBox numbers on this stunning one-sided disposal of Margarita by Mosley. Mosley lands 70 more punches, throws 22 more and connects at a 13% higher rate. Mosley landed 49% of his power shots. We have told you many times, if a fighter lands close to half or more than half of his power shots, chances are he got a big victory. And now Larry Merchant stands by with the number one welterweight in the world, Shane Mosley. Thank you, Jim. Shane, is it possible that all the distractions everyone has been talking about motivated you to one of your great performances. You know, I think it did motivate me a little bit. I mean, I've been Big Bear, you know, my new trainer, Nazim Richardson, did a great job in that way, a great, great game plan. Um, you know, my, my stretch and my stretch coach and strengthening um, Gustavo Santorani. Uh, we all up there, uh, Anthony Randolph, right, everybody, we up there. We train hard. We train very hard up there. Shane, every, all about everybody, boxing. everybody trains hard. No, but, but not this, everybody can do what you did tonight. How did you do it? Focus, focus. I focused on the game plan. This is good training, good training, good coach. This, this was my night. You know, everybody came out here like the first time when I, when I stepped foot here in the Staples Center. They came out to witness a great fight. And when Mar Margarito, they knew it was going to be a great fight, and we fought our, we fought our bus off. When you say your coach, did you get a new look and a new strategy from your new coach that you believe helped you to win? Well, I'm not sure if it was a, a new strategy or anything, but I know that we did have a plan and a strategy of what we wanted to do in the fight, and we executed it, and we did it. In Capsule, what was that plan? And what was the, the execution of the... The plan you had in Capsule. Well, I mean, the plan, <laughs> the, plan, the plan was, you know, I knew he was going to walk into the punches. I knew that he was going to uh, come right for it. Was kind of, it was kind of an easy plan to do because, you know, uh, Margarita fights hard. He fights one way, but he fights very hard. And not just anybody can beat him. He's a great, war, a great warrior, a great war champion. You just can't beat Margarita. You have to be a special person. And that special did person you, was me. 
Did you imagine that you could actually stop Margarito, who has never been anywhere near a knockout? Well, you know, I tell you all the time, uh, Larry, I always go for the knockout. So when, when the fans should know, when they come to see Shane Mosley, Shane is going for that knockout. We're going for a great fight. And the same thing with Margarito. I knew he was going for a knockout, too. Let's, let's take a look at those knockdowns, Shane, and just help me describe them. This is round eight, the first round. Well, you know, that big left hook that I have, I throw very well. Um, you know, I caught Fernando Vargas with it. I caught uh, Mayorga with it. And, you know, the, the left hook is, is pretty strong. I but he had been pretty well softened up by then, right? Yeah, I think I softened him up a little bit with the body shots. Um, you know, he was throwing some good body shots as well. We both was catching each other with great body shots. But like I told you, I'm a big welterweight too. I have great hand, hand speed and I have good hand po uh, hit power. And uh, not just anybody can stand up to it. What was it like for you to go in for the finish of that fight, knowing that it was inevitable by that time? Uh, it, it, was, it was very exciting, I should say. I mean, I know quite how to attack him, how to get to him, because I didn't want him to uh, lose that buzz that I knew he had after the bell ended. I said, oh, man, he might recover now. And I knew he was going to come back very hard, because he's, he's a warrior. He's going to fight to the end. And that's how all of, all those California fighters do. Don't you know, fight for me to Looking the around at this giant crowd of over 20,000 people, Oscar's statue out front. <laughs> <laughs> you think you belong there now? You're the first fighter that ever fight here twice, and you've done pretty well here. I think my statue will probably be up there right along with Oscar's. <laughs> me, me and Bernard, I mean, we're both part of Golden Boy Promotions. Uh, Oscar was up there first, me and Bernard can get up there second. Uh, Golden Boy promotion uh, right. team. I asked you before the fight, how, on a scale of one to ten, where were you? You said you'd tell me after the fight. <laughs> so is this a ten or a twelve? You asked, you asked that question for me, Larry. <laughs> I mean, I, I haven't got a chance to see the fight, but I know that uh, my hidden power was a ten. <laughs> Thank you very so much. Congratulations on a great fight, Shane. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Tony. You were on top of the world for months and months after the Cotto win. What happened tonight? Bueno, en verdad, este, le doy crédito a Molly. Yo lo había mencionado, tiene una gran experiencia. La esquina quiso parar la pelea. Yo, en verdad, yo me sentía bien, ¿no? Pero Truthfully, la esquina es la que, la que mira. Truthfully, all credit to Mosley. I said he's a, he's a great champion, he's a great fighter. And my corner wanted to stop the fight, but I said no. I wanted to continue. If, if the fight were to end, you wanted to be knocked out. Bueno, realmente sí, este, en verdad. Estoy contento porque todo este público vino a apoyarme a mí. En verdad, yo quería pelear hasta que se acabara la pelea. Mi esquina paró la pelea, pero pues ni hablar. Ellos son los que están mirando, pero yo dentro de mí me sentía bien, en verdad. Truthfully, that is true, and I'm very happy for all the public that came here to to help me, but. I feel I could have continued, but my corner wanted to stop the fight. What made Shane Mosley so dominant over you from the first round to the end? Bueno, yo creo que yo los mencioné, tiene una gran experiencia. Tal vez este los amarres de él no me ya cuando lo trataba de lastimar ya me abrazaba, ya lo tenía encima y y no puedes andar bien mis brazos. I mentioned it. He has great experience and also when he got on the inside, he was able to clinch and I couldn't get him off so that he did not give you the room to do what you would like to do. En verdad, sí, este, yo lo mencioné, bueno, tiene, tiene una gran experiencia, ¿no? Tal vez no fue mi noche, a la, a la mejor me estudió bien, quiso cortarme la distancia y, y lo alcanzó a lograr, ¿no? That is truthfully the case, and he's a great champion. And maybe he studied me well, maybe he wanted to get in close, and that's what, what happened. Can you now go forward and fight the rematch with Koto? in your next fight. Bueno, sí, vamos a vamos a platicar con la empresa a ver qué es lo que qué es lo que nos va a tener, pero en verdad solamente tuve una una gran una una mala noche. Me voy a volver a levantar como lo hice, en verdad, y voy a volver a ser campeón del mundo. Well, truthfully, that'll be the case. I had a bad night, and once again, I will lift my arms as the champion of the world. Thank you very much, Tony. Jim. Well, before tonight, you would have said that the greatest win of Shane Mosley's career. 
was his first victory over Oscar De La Hoya in Staples Center in 1999. Now that's number two because Shane came back to Staples Center and produced one of the